Giving your 3D object a bump texture file literally adds bumps to it, gives it texture. And there's that darn word texture again. In this case, texture means, you know, the way it looks as opposed to a texture file. You want to give it some bumps like lizard skin, something like that, or the surface of a planet. So to see how this works, let's go to Photoshop and open that up. We'll go File New. Let's make a sphere. So mesh from preset sphere and click Create. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to click on it once with the selection tool to select the sphere and one more time to select the material. And there's Bump. Bump is set to 10% by default. Why? I don't know, because it doesn't make any difference what it's set to when there's no file associated with it. I can change this to 100% and nothing will happen. If you don't believe that, let's render it and see what happens when we render it. And at first it'll look like something's going on, but then it'll settle down and look exactly as it did when we started this thing. So I'm not really clear why they even bother putting it at 10%. Nevertheless, let's take it back to 10% and let's give this thing some texture. Let's give this thing some bumpiness. To do that, we need to add a texture file over here and go this little drop down arrow new texture and it has the same size as our document click OK and nothing will happen until we edit it we got to go back here we see we have a little icon there indicating that there is now a texture file but of course right now it's just a transparent layer click on that edit the texture and we need to give this some stuff that will apply some bumpiness to that surface and you do that by using grayscale I'll show you in a second here let's view these two guys side by side arrange to a vertical click on you the way that a bump map works is that where it's black, it goes into the object. Where it's white, it comes out of the object. And where it's gray, it stays basically on the surface. So to see that in action, let's add some gray and black stuff to this thing. Go to Filter. We'll go down to Render. Let's put some clouds on it. Very simple. Got a lot of grayscale things going on there. Let's click on this to see what difference that makes. And voila, already we got some bumpiness here. Let's change a couple things so to make it look a little bit better. I'm going to take the shine from 20% here, which is too shiny for me, and move it up to about 100% just to reduce the specular highlight to that little guy like that. And now bump is up to 10%. Let's raise it up. Let's see what happens. Go up to something much higher. Look at that. Just from adding clouds to it. Looks pretty wild. Just think of the things you can do. All right, let's go over and do something different. I'll keep this guy at 100% and change this one. Click on that. Let's make it fibers instead. Go up to filter, render. And we'll go to Fibers. Take the default setting here. Wow, look at that. Now we'll click on this guy and see what happens. Whoa, basically I have an orange or something like an orange. Of course, it'll look more like an orange if we make it an orange color. So let's click on Diffuse here. Change it to orange down here like that. Oranger. That's kind of working there. Might be a little too bumpy for our own good, right? So let's just take the bump down a bit and smooth things out so it's not so bumpy. I mean, would you buy an orange like that? No, probably not. But would you buy an orange like this? Eh, maybe. So that's how that works. You can use an image file to serve as your bump map. Let's apply a little NASA image to this guy. Let's go up here to Diffuse. Change the texture to something else. We'll replace it. Let's go get the Mars topo map here. Click Open. Right off the bat, we've replaced it. Let me click on you with the Selection tool and see what we have here. Rotate you around a bit. We see that we have the texture of the orange there. We also have this gap here. Let's fix that by opening up that texture file. Going over here, editing the texture, and you'll see that the texture map didn't quite fill things up here. So it's a background layer. Let's convert it to a standard layer by double clicking on it, clicking OK. Controller Command T on that guy, and let's just expand the heck out of that thing. Can't really see what I'm doing here right now, so I'm gonna hold this guy down like that, holding the Alt or the Option key, plus the Shift key to keep things centered up and make it taller that way. And let's see how the sides are going here. Same thing, Alt or Option, and pull it this way to constrain the proportions to keep it centered. That's good. We'll accept that. And now we'll go back, take a look at it. But we don't like the orange texture on our shot of Mars here, right? We don't want that. So let's use the Mars image file as the bump map. You can do that. You don't need to have a grayscale thing to make it happen. Photoshop converts it to grayscale. It looks to the light yellow there and makes that kind of high and looks at the darker areas and makes it kind of low. So let's just see how that works. Go over here and select on that. Click on the little drop down arrow here. And we're going to replace the texture. Click on that. Let's go get Mars here, Mars Topo, like that. And that'll add a bump map to it. That's now kind of smooth because it wasn't as rough looking as these fibers. We'll zoom in a bit so we can see it. Controller Command Plus a couple of times there. Now we'll just increase the bump value. And you'll see that, ah, we're actually getting some sense that there's some topography there. may not be exactly accurate because the yellow may not be something you want to have go down. You may want it to go up. Nevertheless, it does give it some texture. You can use image files as your source for this thing. 
Let's change that just to see how it works with a different planet. Over here, let's go to a different texture. So replace that texture with, let's say, Jupiter, which is a much more dramatic looking thing like that. Let's go on down to the bump file for that one. Place that one with Jupiter as well. Well, look at that, quite dramatic. And increase the bump on that, make it really bumpy because it has more contrast in the image file that gives it a much greater bump depth like that. So there you go, folks. That's how you use a bump texture file to give your object this kind of bumpy textured surface.